Welcome to the second part of the Entity Component System series. In the first part, we learned what ECS is and implemented a basic one. If you haven't watched it already, I suggest you do. Link in description. In this video, I'll provide a tiny example on how to use the ECS. But first, let me give you a brief definition of a system. A system is basically anything that uses components. That may include adding or removing components, managing or observing component states, limiting or triggering component behaviors, or even acting as a communication channel between a set of components. To rephrase it, systems are component rule sets that are tailored to that specific game. Let's get to coding. For simplicity, we will implement a basic damage system and make improvements over time. Remember our workflow? I'm gonna duplicate this value and call it damageable. I want this to be a server-sided component. Let's implement simple function take damage. Now I want this component to initialize some values so we will be able to track all those variables in the client side. That should do it. Now let's try to attach this component to something. See the part to the component. Now let's try to deal damage to it. We're gonna need a remote event. This should be enough. Let's test. See it's taking damage. And we unalive the orange bugs. All right, now I'm gonna create a client-sided component and that component will be responsible for keeping track of these numbers. I'm duplicating this. I'm gonna call this damageable client and rename this to damageable server. So I won't, won't use them. Actually, let's organize those. Now, in the client side of the component, I don't need to do instance.new calls. In fact, I must not do them because we see they are already created by the server side of the component. So instead, I need to do wait for child calls. But why did we create a client side of the component? Because now that we are tracking component variables, we will be able to expose some component events, like when health changes. I know that this is an int value, same as here. And as we are using the client component to only expose the component events, I don't actually need to implement anything any function i mean so let's create a random local script i'm calling it damageable client test let's see if we can see the component on the client side is this game streaming yeah that's the problem yeah as you see by the blue mark here we have a client-side component and that's the beauty of our system with the same tag we can run two components at once now let's test our events see client component knows that this is taking damage although the damage taking logic is written in server thanks to these values created by the server client component can observe them 
Now we can actually expose them like this. I'm going to go ahead and create a bindable event. Let's call it health changed. Now I'm going to fire the health change event and in the destroy function, I will destroy it. Now, how do I access it? This isn't type safe. That's why we don't see anything on the IntelliSense, but I know what it is. This video isn't about type safety in Lua, so I'm just going to ignore this for now. As you see, we can bind to the component events. I can add as many events as I want, like on diet, let's say. Actually, this should be named diet and this should be named on diet because it's a naming convention guys after five hits it is dead now now we can add more features if you want to let's say we're gonna track the health so that we will know if the entity took damage or got some healing. Now instead of on health changed, we can track on damage taken. We can stop listening this now. I'm gonna remove the event. The underscore is a polite way of please don't use this variable outside the class. If Lua supported private variables, I would make them private. But that's what we have. And it's okay, because we don't need private variables, to be honest. It's a common naming convention, actually. Programmers usually start with underscore when naming private variables. And let's try. See? It still works. Very good. Now I'm gonna randomize this, let's say 5 to 50, and I want a highlight effect. So when damage taken, I want this to turn red for a moment. It is dead now, so I can't take any more damage. Let's test the healing behavior in two. So with 50% chance, this will be a either healing or a damaging. And if the entity is healed, I want it to turn green. Actually, I forgot something. So now that we add healing, we don't want the current HP to be greater than max HP. we can test it properly. I'm gonna turn the 
he opens to warnings so we will see instantly see it's taking heals too but uh, after dying it took a healing we're gonna prevent that too set folder is that value then return it that's it one more test it refuses to die my god how much health does it have 66 come on okay i give up it refuses to die let's mess with the odds and this should die easily now okay very good now let me go over what we did here really quick we created a damage system with one server sided and one client sided components notice how both share the same component type but live in different environments server component was responsible of the real logic client component was responsible of observing the server component and exposing component events and with those events we built a minor system to visualize damaging and healing as you may notice this system dictates nothing complicated everything we coded is so similar to the engine api so that wraps up the part two feel free to make experiments on the system put it to stress test it's all yours now in the next part of this series i plan to talk about how to expand the system and how to introduce different types for the same component without using inheritance or inner classes let me know if you have any questions or concerns you can find me in the comment section and my discord channel and finally thanks for watching have a nice day